Hello and welcome to Call of the Week, the show where I, Brob989, decide whether to keep my new deck or whether to sell it on decks of Keyforge. Today I have Lowfoot, the Thinker Duchess. This is a Logos Mars Shadows deck. Logos has shown a whole lot of creatures, including three Dexters. Three Dexters is maybe a little too much. You don't want to have to keep drawing those and playing them out again. Kehoe and Mother are going to help you move through your deck a little bit more. Looks like this deck also has a ton of creatures in Mars. Everything in Mars is a creature except for the Ammonia Clouds. Two Mega Mouths gonna synergize well with all the creatures we also have in Logos. Two Thinka Drones, that could be useful perhaps with the Dexters, so you can put them away until you need them later, something like that. Not sure what you'd want to archive with the Thinka Drone, maybe an Urchin. Dominator's gonna be great to give some protection, maybe to the Mother. You could see using it on the Mega Mouth or the Zookeeper. Transitioning over to Shadows, we've got a Carlo. I don't think there's a single artifact in this deck though. So quite a useless Carlo indeed. Poison Wave, not going to synergize well with all of the little itty bitty creatures you have, along with Ammonia Clouds also. Lots of direct damage in Shadows, the Booby Trap as well. Hidden Stash is useful, quite a bit of archiving in this deck, but I'm not seeing any big combos that you might be able to pull off with all of the archiving. All in all, not seeing really what this deck is trying to do. There's a okay amount of amber control, certainly lots of creatures, so you could reap up a lot if your opponent doesn't have too much creature control. But there's really no big sort of combo play to go for that I can see. I'll give it a shot, see if I discover anything in my first two games, and I'll be back for the third and final game. Well, the first two games were just pretty brutal. Three Dexters ended up kind of just being dead weight. Usually needed to discard them. The only time they were useful was when it just kept my opponent from forging the very next turn. That was the only time I played them. There's some stealing in shadows, but no big plays, no too much to protect, no bait and switch. So it, it ended up being only moderately effective at controlling my opponent's amber. Lots and lots of creatures, but one board wipe and you're back to the drawing board. The direct damage cards, ammonia clouds and poison wave really were very non synergistic with all the various small creatures that you have in this deck. Really felt quite clunky, just not a lot able to get done. There was a bit of movement in Logos that helped things out, but having 26 creatures and 10 actions, it's just kind of slow. Let's go ahead and hop into the third game and we'll see if I'm able to do any better in my game against Siaka here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to see if Lowfoot, the Thinker Duchess, has what it takes. Siaka is playing Steve Opticus Centric Logos Mars Shadows Coda deck got a library access and a phase shift in there. That's nice to see at the top of your deck list. With a wild wormhole as well. Look at that. All right. All right. Not a ton of creatures in there. Three soft landings. That seems like it may be too many. Looks like he's only got four Mars creatures, including two John Smites. So, and a psychic network. You could see that pairing with a couple of creatures in soft landing, but three soft landing tends to be a little bit more than you really want. And mating season, also a bit of anti-symmetry. Shadows, bait and switch, always good. Miasma, pairs well with the bait and switch. 
Carlo, but I don't see a lot of artifacts here. So not going to be a very useful Carlo. Imperial Trader, I don't have any Sanctum, so that's nice. Silvertooth with Duskrunner can always make for a nice little surprise steal there. Alright, let's take a look at my opening hand here. Hmm, interesting. Lots of pinging damage in the opening hand. Considering my board arrangement, that could be good. I think I mulligan this, though. There's so few creatures for this opening hand, and it's not a great split. So I think I mulligan this. Okay, that's better. That's definitely better. Um, I think I start with the Mind Warper here. Unless I go for Hidden Stash. No, because I'll probably go Shadows first, and... Um, that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So yeah, let's start with the Mind Warper. Great, pulling into another Mars creature. Not what I wanted to do. Bait and switch coming down for nothing for Siaka here. Silvertooth doing that play I was just talking about with the Reaping and getting a surprise 4 damage out. Taking out my Mind Warper. Nobby and Carlo coming down. So the clear move for me here is going to be Shadows. Play down my equally useless Carlo. Ghostly Hand comes down. And let's put the Hidden Stash. Um, I think I'll pop the Mars into the Archive. That makes sense since I only have one Mars card. And I pulled into a decent amount of Logos here. Imperial Trader, he's going to know what's in my hand. Shadows, again for him, is the clear play. Makes a lot of sense. He's going to be able to get rid of my Carlo off the Silvertooth Reaping, steal one of my Amber, and get an extra Reap in with his Carlo. He's taking a good look at what I have in my hand. He must be thinking about what he wants on the flank because of my... He knows I have a Posturing Bolt and I have a Mind Lock, so he's probably thinking about what to put on his flank. Alright, so I'm definitely going Logos. If I Posturing Bolt the Umbra, I can take out these two and then steal the Nobby. If I steal the, the Umbra with the Mind lock, I can posture and bolt the silver tooth and the knobby and take out the Carlo. That makes sense. Wipe his board, get the Umbra onto my side, and then play down my other two Logos creatures. He is in check here. I'm not going to be able to prevent him from forging. There's nothing I can do at all. Alright, mind lock. Don't take the archive. Mind lock. Take that Umbra. Posture and Bolt, take out his whole lineup there. Mother comes down. And Kiho as well. Pulling into a reasonable number of Mars cards. Of course, all creatures. What else would you expect with this deck? Siaka forges his first key. Here comes one of the soft landings. Does he have a creature in hand to make it worthwhile? Looks like he does not. Mating sea. Oh, no, he does. He just played the mating season because he didn't want to shuffle his creatures back. Got it. Oh, this this is uh, the best he could have hoped for, almost certainly. He's got a, a jammer and a thingadrome in hand. Using the smith to ready and use the grabber jammer. Grabber jammer's fighting down the mind lock so he can take back his umbra. Yep. Yep, that's pretty, that's pretty solid play there from Siaka. So do I play out my Mars board now or do I go Logos, Reap One, fight Kiho into the, probably the umbra and uh, draw a card there. Yeah, I think I go Mars. The The Logos play is just too slow. I've uh, got to start moving through some of these cards here. 
And that that Mars board is going to be a big threat to him. He's going to have to do something about it with two Mega Mouths and two non-Mars creatures on the board. He's going to need to either get himself a bunch of Amber or somehow take care of my my board. Zoopkeeper popping into my hand now. Along with a reasonable amount of logos. Siaka's going Mars. Another Grabber Jammer coming down. He's gonna probably take out some of my creatures here. I'm guessing he's get he takes the bolter and or one of the mega mouths. Grabber Jammer takes out the Mega Mouth, one of them. He's probably going to do the same with his other Grabber Jammer using his John Smythe here. Think a drone fighting the Bolter. That's a fair trade for him. Yep, Smythe is going to ready the Jammer. Jammer is fighting into my Mega Mouth as predicted. Leaving me with a much less appealing Mars turn here. I think Logos is the play now. Uh, I can move through more of my hand, probably get that Zookeeper down for a possible future Mars turn, or at least a threat on the board. Uh, Adventure is going to be able to take out one of the Jammers. Unless I go for the Smythe, since I'm not in check anyways. That might actually make more sense here, just because he's getting so much mileage out of the smite. So I think that's going to be the play. So put down these other Mar or Logos cards, capturing one with the Dexter. With one Dexter, it seems worthwhile for now since he's so far ahead. Zookeeper coming down. I think let's fight first. Oh, whoops. Nope, that was a bad call. I just messed up. That's okay. And I drew into a Shadows card. Not what I wanted. Gonna take the two damage onto the Mother because I messed up and fought in the wrong order, but that's okay. Mistakes happen. Got a big old pile of Shadows in my hand here. Booby Trap, that's gonna be very useful. Mac the Knife is always good. I'm liking the look of my Logos board. Shadows is the call for Siaka. Silvertooth coming down ready. Umbra is going to take out my Bat Drone, making my Logos board just a little less appealing. Lights out. What's he going to bounce? I'm guessing the Zookeeper and the Keyhoe, maybe? That's probably what I would do. The two cards that are useful on the board. Yep. Silvertooth's going to reap. He's up to four. My board is not so appealing anymore. I think Shadows is going to be the play here. The Booby Trap will be able to take out the this Grabber Jammer along with these two Shadows creatures. I can get a bunch of creatures down and then Silvertooth can get a, a reap in. I need to start getting some Amber seeing as how I have zero currently. Not looking too good so far. Alright, booby trap. The sky. Boom. Not bad. I'm trying to think about what I want to put on the flank because I'm gonna wanna. I want to have the dominator out there. Probably next to the zookeeper. And I think the Mac the Knife. That makes sense. So let's go Urchin. Can go next. Dodger can go next to that. Mac the knife all the way on the end there, and then Silvertooth will go over here and get a reap in. Pulling into that not very useful poison wave, and the rest is half Logos and half Mars. All creatures, of course. 
Unless I need it, need it. Probably going to discard this Dexter. <laughs> so many creatures, says Siaka. That's right. That's what I said, Siaka. That is what I said. Almost too many, you might argue. Library access has popped off for Siaka. Putting down a Howling Pit. Gonna make my hand just that much bigger. Thank you very much. Uh, Reacher Smo Research Smoko. Dr. Escoterra also coming down. Experimental Therapy on my Mac the Knife. So it's stunned for now and then continues to be of any house. That's a nice move. I like that. I've never thought of that before. That's a, that's a pretty that's a pretty good use of experimental therapy there. Just thinking about what to do next. I'm hoping he hasn't drawn too many more cards. He's got a second experimental therapy. He's attaching to my urchin. Also stunning that and making it of all houses. Rocket boots. Going on to his Dr. Escoterra. And I think that's all the Logos placards that he pulled this turn. What to do next? Uh, it's pro. Yeah. It's gotta be Mars or Logos. He does not. Ha he is not in check. If I go Mars, I can use the Thinkadrome to archive my Urchin. That would be nice. So I could use it again later. Not a ton of amber control here, so I need to think about how I'm going to stay competitive. I could also use the Tunk to fight down the Escoterra, which would be a good thing to do, because I don't want him to get be able to use those rocket boots. Logos, I wouldn't be able to fight anything, I would just reap and then I'd play down my creatures. So I don't like the Logos play very much. There is actually something to be said for the Shadows play here. Bullet Eye would be able to destroy the Escoterra or the Jammer. Um, Dodger could destroy the other one and steal. And Silvertooth could reap for one. And I would just discard this Poison Wave. It would do me way more damage than it would do him. I think that's the right call, actually, because... Even though I'm not moving through cards, I'll still draw two more cards here. And it's the most high leverage turn. It really puts me, it's going to put me into a mega check and I need to make some moves here because I am just way behind. And it would be good to take this chance to steal as well. Yeah, we're going to go shadows. Discard that. Dodger. Fight into the Escoterra. Bullet Eye can reap and destroy the Grabber Jammer. Silver Tooth gets another reap in, putting me up to nine. Hopefully, I'll be able to forge next. And look at that, no shadows in the draw. Looking at half Logos and half Mars. Probably going to want to go for that Mars turn next. We'll see what the board state looks like after this turn. Shadows for Siaka. Miasma. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> Booby Trap comes down. What's he going to blast? Hmm. Okay. Mar uh, Shadows. Shadows gets taken out, denying me the possibility of archiving that urchin on my next turn. That's a That's a shame. Dusk Runner onto the Smoko, making me want to destroy it. Nice move. I like that. I like that. Uh, okay. He is not in check still, so that's good. Unfortunately, I have 2-2-2 two, two, two in my draw. That's really annoying. I cannot archive the Urchin like I wanted, which is unfortunate. Alright, I think I go Mars so that I can take out the Smoko with the Tunk because I don't want him to be stealing with it. Uh, and then I'll be able to heal it, obviously. And I'll just reap with Think a Drone and then get these Mars critters down on the board. And of course, 
be able to unstun my Max and Knife, which he denied me two turns of use. So, very well played there. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> well, my tank's gonna have one damage on it. Oh well, that's fine. Um. And I got a bunch of logos. Two nerve blasts in my draw pile. Look at that. That's fine. I can hold off his forge with the Dexters for a turn, hopefully. Siaka's going for logos, playing down a phase shift to start into a soft landing. Ooh, nice. I like that. Archivist comes down with rocket boots on it. Oh, ooh. That is, that is a smooth move right there. Archiving two cards with the Archivist and drawing a whole new hand of cards. Real nice. Real nice move. Up to eight Amber is Siaka, meaning even if I play both of these Dexters, I am not going to be able to stop him from forging. So I think I continue to craft my Logos hand here and just play Mars. I can still get five Amber, get rid of his Archivist through the Zookeeper. I'm considering archiving the Dexter with the Thinkadrome. Just because I don't want to have to draw it again. With the Mother and the Howling Pit, it's not that big of a deal. And he hasn't killed it at all, forcing me to redraw it yet. Alright, let's go Mars. Please come down, Zookeeper. Putting that into my archive. Oh yeah, unstun the Dominator. I think I just misclicked there. Did I just misclick? Siaka is very graciously letting me fix my mistake here. Not gonna archive anything with the Thinkadrome. Reaping with uh, all my creatures up to 9 Amber. Let's see what Siaka does here. Forging his second key is Siaka. Of course, I knew there was nothing I could have done about that. Let's see if he can get four more Amber up here. Force me to respond. If he gets up to seven, I'm going to have to go either Logos or Shadows. Phosphorus Stars to start off, stunning everything except for my Mars. Soft Landing lets John Smith come in ready. Psychic Network's gonna steal one there. Mind Warper and a second Smith come down. Smith's gonna reap to ready the Mind Warper. That Mind Warper is going to capture one of my Amber onto my own creatures, I'm guessing. I mean, might reap, but I don't think so. I think he uses the action, action ability here. Yeah, he captures one onto my Thinkadrome. Okay, so he's only up to four. He's got all those elusive... Mars creatures out. So I'm going to need to do something about those. Now, of course, the Smiths are not as scary if I get rid of the Mind Warper. He does have more Mars creatures in his deck, but I, if I remember correctly, he only has, I think, a Thinkadrome. So it's not too worrisome to leave the Smiths. So I can Zookeeper the Mind Warper. First I Mind Warper is Mind Warper, then I Zookeeper the Mind Warper, then I can Reap with my remaining creatures, which will give me one, two, three, four, because Mac and I, five, 
six, seven. Yeah. Uh, I'll be at eight total. I think that's the right move. Oh my gosh, do I actually have a shot at this game? I am kind of flabbergasted. <laughs> I thought, uh, I didn't think I had any chance. This is definitely not a sealed deal, but this is going to be closer than I anticipated here. And I'm still sitting on a pretty comfortable amount of amber control in the hand, so I think Mars is going to be the right call here. Let's make sure we order this correctly. Don't take the archive. Unstun that Zorg. Mine Warper on there. Zookeeper is going to put him into my archive. And then Reap with the rest of the creatures. Make sure I hit the right one here. Yeah, Reap. There we go. Uh, no, skip that. Not going to archive anything. All right, let's see if he can get me off check at eight. He has flipped. He might have bait and switch. He would still need one more. He's going shadows, so I'm guessing he's got it. Yep, he's got the bait and switch. I think he had a uh, Relentless Whispers, maybe? Carlo's coming down, but he doesn't have any more artifacts. Silver tooth. Oh, does he have the... Um, Upgrade? Nope. Oh, I won! Just barely. Just barely won. Interesting game. Um, I definitely thought he had me around mid-game. Um, he definitely forged his first key earlier, but the board state slowly grew, and he just didn't have anything to deal with it. He didn't have any of those board clears. Even just like a, a ammonia cloud or a poison wave would have helped him a lot, which I obviously discarded. And it was just the reaping, just the reap out that um, won the game for me in the end there. I'm going to be honest with you all. Um, I told Siaka that this was... Uh, not exactly a high octane deck and he graciously brought something of a similar caliber he's saying he didn't have any clears which is exactly correct that's exactly what he needed and so this was a um bottom of the barrel brawl i would say and in case you haven't detected from the way I've been talking about this deck. I will call the week this week. This is not a deck I'm going to keep here. Too many creatures. Uh, it worked out in this game because my opponent didn't have any board clears. But like I said, that's just not something you can rely on. Maybe it could compete with a few higher level decks that had minimal amber con minimal board control it's got okay amber control but it's just not going to be really competitive and i think that there is going to be a better deck in the six remaining in my box that's right i am halfway through the first box for call of the week. Stick around, see when I find out what my second deck I will keep will be. As always, I've been your host, Brobnar89. Big shout out to Siaka. Six weeks strong. He's still putting up with my nonsense every week. Thank you very much for all the great games. I will see you next time on Call of the Week.